welcome back to the Voidcraft server where as you can see we are in the end because as you may recall at the end of the last episode we got ourselves these three wither skeleton skulls. So what we need to do now is come down here and actually summon the wither to get ourselves another star. To summon the wither of course we need to put our soul sand like this and then get our skulls on but I'm gonna be honest with you guys this is a pretty tough fight like it's kind of scary I don't want to scare anyone with this so I'm just gonna go ahead and cut to the end. Whew, oh my goodness, that was that was some fight. I nearly died like twice, but I survived and check it out. We got it, we got ourselves this nether star, which means we can get ourselves our beacon, which is great news. Now the other thing you may remember me mentioning at the end of last episode was about getting some netherite. So what I've done is off camera, I've done a little bit of digging down here and I've already made myself this tunnel. And if we go a little bit further along it, we will see what I've done. So this here is a bunch of TNT I crafted up and placed ahead of time, but I wanted to wait until the actual video to set it off. So it's about two stacks of it heading off into the distance here. Let's not waste any more time. Let's just set that off and um, run, I guess. Oh, that looks cool. Is that finished? I may have finished. It's finished as far as I can see anyway, but it's made some hole. I'm just looking to see if even just from here I can see any ancient debris, I'm not sure. Oh, actually, actually, I think that might be some in the distance there. So yeah, that's good. I'm going to go and gather it all up and we'll see how much I've got. And we're back. And at the end of that little escapade, I can reveal that we got 15 pieces of ancient debris, which is, it's all right. It's fairly respectable, I think. Obviously not enough to upgrade all of our kit. We'll only be able to get three pieces for now, but that's okay. I think it's probably going to be the pickaxe, sword and one bit of armor for now. So I'm going to go get this fired up and we'll upgrade some stuff. Now that we've got all of that out of the way, there is something we need to talk about because I've kind of spent the last few episodes really focusing on my base area, which is fine, but it has kind of meant that I've been neglecting the capital and some of the more like community-based projects around here. So we are going to go and remedy that right now. So I have come into the nether right now, and this, this is what passes for a nether hub around here. And quite frankly, it's a little bit embarrassing, and I think we can do much better. So I am going to jump into a coffee fueled build session here and we're going to improve this situation a little bit.
Welcome everyone to the new Nether Hub. Now I will fly out and show you the outside of this in a second, but first let me just explain a little bit about what's going on on the inside here. Because as I was designing and building this, I was kind of thinking about the law of it and what I wanted the law to be. And I decided I wanted it to kind of link in to my own law with my base because I'm the one who built this. I thought it should link into the law I have around my base, which if you've seen my previous episodes, you'll know of course, is to do with dwarves and how my base would be like this hidden dwarven settlement in the mountains. It's over in that direction. That's actually the leader portal right there. So my idea for the law of this place and kind of the nether infrastructure running out from this, so like the pathway tunnels that we're gonna have coming out from this eventually, would be that this was actually a project that was constructed and worked on by the dwarves of Leda and that they were kind of in charge of having constructed all of the nether infrastructure. So now if we fly out of it, I'll go a little bit away here and come and land on here. This is a good point to have a look at it from. There you go. So that is the outside of it. As you can see, it's still kind of floating. So like down here, I will eventually build up some support pillars of some kind. So it's actually supported. And then where it's just the archways going in, those are actually gonna be tunnels coming out in the four cardinal directions, going off to all the other various nether portals that lead us around the place. Okay, on to the next project, which is gonna be a sugarcane farm back here at our base, because at the moment, I kind of feel like I am constantly spending what few diamonds I have topping up my rockets, and I don't really wanna do that anymore. So I'm gonna build myself up a nice sugarcane farm. It doesn't have to be anything too extreme, just so I've got something that I can use to be crafting up a lot more rockets for myself. So here we have one module of the farm. Basically, every time the back sugarcane updates, as just happened there, all of those pistons are gonna fire along that side. Any of these which have grown up to be too high are gonna get popped off and fall in the water, which will flow them down here, and then once I've built the other modules, I will have a collection system in the center here. So that's one. I'm gonna now go build seven more of these things. So I'm just about halfway through here and I turn around and what do I see? I find the most majestic cow in history. Look at that guy just chilling up on top of that mountain. All right, so that completes our sugarcane farm. Now this thing maybe isn't the most efficient thing in the world, but it's good enough for what I need it for. Admittedly, it does look quite ugly at the moment, but this is only a temporary matter. This is just the actual farm itself, and I will later on be building up a proper like decorative building around the thing. Now, the one last job I want to do in this episode is working a little bit more on these mountains. So I have these five shulker boxes here. These two here have andesite in, and these three here are all full of stone. So I'm gonna finish off the wire frame of the mountains on the outside, so from that peak, that one and that one there. And then we'll see how far all of these resources can take us in actually building up the sides of the mountains. bad. I killed some illagers over there earlier and Nana walked too close to my villager farm which is technically a village because it has three villages in there and now I've triggered a raid. Oh this could be fun. Okay so this is really weird like the boss bar there is clearly telling me that there's a raid and I cannot see these guys anywhere like I, I have no idea where these guys are coming from. Never mind, found him. <laughs> Good luck. Attack us from down there, boys. Yes, finally. Oh my goodness, those things take so long. That being said, turns out mountains, really, really easy places to defend. Who knew? Anyway, now back to the time lapse.
is what I've been able to do with those five shulkers of materials that we brought over. And honestly, I'm pretty proud of it. Like, this is kind of my first time really doing terraforming on survival, particularly in this kind of scale. And I think it's turned out looking really, really good. Sadly, filling in everything around this side is gonna to have to wait until next episode as that is everything I have time for in this one. As always, make sure you check out the other Voyager channels. And if you enjoyed this video, then hit that like button, subscribe if you're not already, and leave me a comment letting me know what you thought. Until next time, I've been Matt, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye bye.